Okay, so here we're looking for a situation that has a correlation but not a causal relationship. So that means since we're looking for something that's not causal, let's find all the ones that are causal and cross those off. And what remains should just be the thing where there's a correlation but not one that causes the other. So let me explain in general what they're talking about. So this correlation's all over the place, right? And for example, maybe in, in, in a city, you're studying the crime rates, and you find, very interestingly, that where there's lots of crime, there also, in those areas, tends to be, let's say, a bagel shop. And this might be an odd finding, but you keep looking into it. And it turns out in all, this, all the places where there, where there is crime, somewhere nearby, you can find a place that sells bagels. That's a correlation, right? Where there is one, there is the other. But that doesn't mean necessarily, of course, that, and hopefully, that the bagel shops are the cause of the crime. It just means that there's maybe lots of bagel shops. And since the bagel shops are everywhere, and crime tends to appear, unfortunately, almost everywhere, the two can always be found next to each other, somewhere. So assuming you're in an area where they do have bagels, you're going to find a bagel shop. That's the real reason you're finding bagel shops. But this is not causal. It's just a correlation. Causal means one thing causes the other. So I notice that choice one is gone because the edge of a cube, or the side length of a cube, does affect the volume directly. That's causal. Two is out because the time spent driving, right, does affect how far you've traveled. Also, four is out, though it's not really a good causal relationship, but in general, the number of classes taught, as there are more and more classes, you're probably going to have to hire more people to teach those courses, although there are ways around that, and it's not always consistent. So the answer is choice three. And it, although it might be true that the age of a child um, and the number of siblings a child has, there might be a connection where the older ch children have more siblings because their parents have had more time to have other children. It doesn't mean that the fact that your child is older will cause you to have more children. Right? Think of any family where there's only one or two children. Um, right? I am over 30 years old. It doesn't mean that I'm going to necessarily have lots and lots of siblings or more siblings than someone who's even 12 years old who might have five or six brothers or sisters where I only have one sister, right? So there might not be um, a causal relationship here. You know, in other words, the older you get doesn't mean automatically the more brothers and sisters you have. Okay, the next question. So we have these, these student scores and uh, we want to find the mean and the median and describe the effect of the mean and the median if Ms. Mo Mrs. Mosher adds five bonus points to each of the students, uh, six student scores. Okay, so I'm going to actually pull up the graphing calculator here just for good practice. You don't need to, but I think it's a good idea. So again, the way this works is that you want to enter this data into a list. Hit second stat. Here are my lists right here. Let me, sorry. It's faster if I just hit the stat button. I want to edit my list. So I press stat it. Stats and then edit. Up here with the list heading, hit clear and then enter to clear your list. Let's go up, clear and enter, and then enter in your data. Um, so here we have 72, right? 80, 85, 93, enter. 78. And again, I'm showing you this because this can end up being super useful on some of these examples. Once you have this list, you're essentially done.